All right, one thing your junior high teachers are definitely going to want you to know is how to do all the operations using ratios and fractions. So let's take a look at addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and we'll look at two different types. We'll look at just fractions, and we'll look at mixed numbers with each one. So let's start here with the fraction side. Remember, in addition, you'll need a common denominator, and so the common denominator for eighths and thirds is 20 fourths. It's kind of the best we can do. So, remember, to get this to be a 24, we had to multiply by 3 here on the bottom, so we have to multiply by 3 here on the top. So that gets us 9 24 Then over here, we have to multiply by 8 on the bottom, so that means in order to multiply by the same factor, we'll need this to be an 8 also. Remember, 8 over 8 is just a fancy name for 1, and multiplying by 1 is perfectly allowed. So this would become 20 fourths on the bottom, and then on the top we would get 16, right? So now when we uh, add these together, we get, uh-oh, 25 20 fourths. Well, we want our answers in simplest form. So we know that out of 25 right here, we can get one group of 24. So we would have one with one left over to get that to be 20 fourths. Let's take a look at a more complicated problem, 1 and 3 eighths plus 2 and 2 thirds. Well, we would still have our 1 and 9 24 plus 2 and uh, 16 24 like we had before. Um, so we could just add this again and we would get 1 and 1 24 right here, but we haven't dealt with the 2, so we need to put that 2 in there. And then we also need to put in this 1 right here, so we get 1 plus 2 plus 1 and 1 24, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and 1 24. Now, some students like to take these and make them into improper fractions, but if you remember to do the fraction parts first, if we add those first, then we can just add on the whole number parts afterward. It makes our life a lot easier. Okay, let's take a look at subtraction, and the same thing is true here. We need a common denominator. So again, for these fractions, our common denominator is 20 fourths again. So this time we multiplied over here times 4 over 4. This time, to get this left-hand side to be 24, so we can multiply each side by 3. Okay, so that is keeping it to be a 1. So down here we have 4 24, and this one would be 15 24. And so when we do our subtraction, we just get 9 24. Now, is that simplest form? And the answer, of course, is no. We could divide the top by 3 and divide the bottom by 3, which would get us down all the way to 3 eighths. So here's our final answer to the fraction subtraction part we've got right there. On the mixed number side, you'll notice that I played a dirty trick. 2 and 1 sixth is bigger than 1 and 5 eighths, but sixths are actually smaller. Uh, 1 sixth is smaller than 5 eighths. So now we're going to have to do a little bit of work here to make this work out. So on the left-hand side, we would have 2 and 4 24 And on the right-hand side, we would have 1 and 15 24 And if we want to do fractions first, we can't really take 15 away from 4. So what we'll need to do is take our 2 right here and steal from it. And we can steal 24 24 from it. We can take a whole 1. So we would have 1, and then if we add our 24 24 to the 4 24 we already have, that would give us 28 24 And now on this side, we have just 15 24 attached to our 1, and 28 24 minus 15 24 is going to be 13 24 And then we have just 1 minus 1 here. So our final answer turns out to be 13 24 and we can ask ourselves, is that simplest form? And the answer is yes. Okay, let's look at multiplication with fractions now. I think it's much easier than the addition because we don't need to find a common denominator. So here we would multiply just straight across on the bottom and just straight across on the top. 
So when we multiply 8 times 3, we find that we're giving 20 fourths. 3 times 2 on the top would be 6. Now, with our 6 20 fourths, we can ask, is that simplest form? And the answer, of course, is no. So one thing we could do is choose a factor that will divide both, and 3 will divide both of these. So we'll divide by 3 on the top and divide by 3 on the bottom, which gets us down to a 2 and an 8. Now, wait a minute. That's not in simplest form either. And here's the reason why. We didn't choose the best GCF. Really, this divides by 6, and this divides by 6. So if we divide 6 by 6, we get a 1. And if we divide 24 by 6, we get a 4. And there's our final answer in its simplest form, which is pretty cool. Now I need to move this for the next part because we need some space. Okay, let's look at what we can do with multiplication with <clears throat> our mixed numbers. Now, the best thing we can do in this case is to get these to be improper fractions. And the way to do that is to multiply the denominator times the whole number and then add the top. So 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 more makes 9. So I have 9 fourths over here. On this side, 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 more makes 5. So now we have 5 over 3. Now, we have a couple of options. We could just multiply straight across here to find that we would get 45 over 12, but that's not going to be simplest form, so there might be an easier way, and that easier way is to look at cross simplification. So on this problem, 4 and 5, we can't do anything with them. They have no common factor but 1. However, 3 and 9 have a common factor, and that common factor is 3. So if we divide this by 3 and we divide this by 3, our fraction really changes. The bottom number over here becomes a 1, and the top number over here becomes a 3. And then when we multiply now, we get 15 over 4, which is a lot easier to simplify than 45 over 12. So 15 over 4, we can divide 15 by 4 three times with three left over. And so there's our final answer. Now here with 40, uh, 45 and 12, 45 can divide by 12 also three times. 36 would be left over. So uh, that would be the multiple there. So we get 9 over 12. And 9 over 12 is a fancy name for 3 fourths. So we can still get there. It's just an extra step. All right, finishing with our fraction operations, now let's take a look at division. Now, with our first problem, you notice that I've got a whole number to start here divided by a fraction. But we're going to do keep, change, flip. So we'll keep the first number the same. Change our operation to multiplication and flip our number here. And in the end, we wind up getting a fraction anyway. But we'll just multiply across the top. And we know that 4 times 2 is 8. And 1 times 1 is 1. So our final answer is just 8. With our mixed numbers on the right-hand side, again, keep change flip. But first, let's convert to improper fractions. 4 times 2, that's 8, plus 1 more. This tells us how many groups on the bottom. The top tells us how many extras we have. So 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 more makes 9. So we have 9 fourths. On the right-hand side, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 more is 3. So we have 3 halves. Now, this is where it gets a little crazy. We have to do keep, change, flip. So now our problem becomes 9 over 4 times 2 over 3. And we can make our lives easier if we do some simplification. 9 and 3 have a common factor of 3, so if we divide the bottom number by 3, that becomes a 1. If we divide the top number by 3, that becomes a 3. And 4 and 2 have a common factor with 2. So if we divide 2 by 2 here, we get a 1. And if we divide 4 by 2 here, we get a 2. So our problem suddenly becomes 3 over 2 times 1 over 1, which is equal to 3 halves. Now, is that simplest form? Not really. We want to convert it to... Uh, an improper fraction. Uh, we want to convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. 3 divided by 2 will happen one time, and then we have 1 
left over. So three halves is equal to one and a half, and there's our final answer. All right, good luck with reviewing fraction operations.